Hi guys, welcome to this new session for portfolio management for CFL level 2. From today onwards, we'll be starting with the level 2 content for portfolio management. Now, for portfolio management, I won't necessarily be following the exact sequence of all the readings in your curriculum. We'll be taking things in a slightly different sequence. We'll be covering all the readings, but we won't be doing them in sequence as given by your curriculum. The reason for that is fairly simple. Almost all the readings of portfolio management are fairly isolated. They are good enough for reading in separate ways. They are not connected with each other. There are one or two readings which are connected. We'll cover them in sequence itself. So out of the readings which are pretty isolated, I wanted to start with one of the most basic readings so that we can connect with the content that we have already covered at level one so that you feel a connection with portfolio management as we move along. So the first reading we'll be taking is economics and investment markets. Now for this reading, the content covered in the class would be fairly straightforward. It's a very simple reading, basic reading. It is just connecting the concepts we've already covered at level one with slightly more nuanced level two applications. So for this reading, what I would suggest for studying is refer the video and then uh, do check out the study material as well. The study material would contain some more details than the video for very small topics which are you know, not really worth it covering over here. Very basic theory is what's covered in those topics. So check out the study material also and study material would also have like around 5 to 10 questions maybe. Those are not meant for you to replace your question bank with. Rather, they are just meant to get you started with the question. So just read the study material, do those few questions. And after that, your chapter would be pretty much done. Anytime you want to revise it, you can look over the notes or just keep practicing questions regularly. That would suffice. So let's start right away with the introduction part. what exactly would we be covering within this topic. So if you remember from level one, at level one points, there used to be an equation. Discount rate, which I'm denoting here with a small r. So discount rate used to be my real risk free rate plus inflation. Plus, it was a lot of risk premiums. Now, risk premium was basically the compensation I would get or I would expect as an investor for any sort of risk that I am taking. Now, this risk premium could take multiple values depending upon the kind of security. For example, we could have now these are examples, not specific uh, separate parts of equation, but we could have credit risk premium. We could have market risk premium in case of equity securities. We could also have interest rate risk premium, in which case we would be focused a little bit more on bonds that if the market rate changes or let's say Fed decides to change the rates then what would be the impact? So the risk premium could be literally anything. Any risk you can think of in the market would command a premium because as an investor, as a rational investor, if I'm taking more risk, I generally expect more compensation in return. And risk premium is nothing but that compensation itself. Now, this entire chapter is looking at this equation itself. So at level one, you just had this equation and it was explained like in two, three minutes and we took it at face value. At level two, we'll be looking at a little bit more detail for each of the individual components. Now for risk premium within this chapter, only three securities have been highlighted properly. So those three securities are my credit risky bonds, my equity shares and commercial real estate. So we'll be looking at risk premium only specific to those three securities, but mind you in the real world, any sort of risk that you're taking 
will command a premium. So, um, larger risks would have more premium, smaller risks would have less premium. But for your syllabus and for this chapter in theoretical sense, only three securities are highlighted. So let's look at all of these components in detail. The first component is real risk relay. So let's start with this discussion. 